Okay, so in this demo, I'm going to, we're going to do the, one of the last operations, which is on number four on the note here. It says countersink all threaded holes 90 degrees, 10 to 30 thousandths larger than the major diameter both sides. So when it, when it says both sides, you know, what it's talking about is uh, countersinking, of course, on the on what we call the near side, which is the side that we spot, drill, countersunk, tapped. And then on the back side, we're going to get a burr because we didn't originally countersink this side. So let's push material out the back through the drill, through the tap, and we didn't countersink again. So we're going to end up countersinking on this side. Now, if you have all the countersinks correct on the first operation, you would have faced the material to a thickness of 375 all the way around and then you'd still have burrs on this side. If you didn't, if your countersinks were too deep on that first operation, then you might, may have faced this material and you probably also have burrs on this side as well. So you'll need to countersink not only on the far side but on the near side again to redo um, some of the ones that were maybe done to the correct depth but you had to face material off and now there's no countersink there. So there's a, I'm gonna um, use a real quick method to do this in the original um, tapping operation. I think it's operation two for this particular part uh, that goes through spot, drill, countersink, tap. I show how you can use the table feed depth um, to bring the table up and the quill stop. In this case, we're not going to do that. In this demo, I'm going to just do it by hand. I'm going to use a six flute countersink. We have some single flutes that will work as well. And this one actually, if you can see, that does show on the shank that it's a 90 degree. Um, there's another way to quickly determine if your tool is 90 degree as well, because you can just lay it flat here and you can tell if you bring another um, square tool or square up, you, I can tell that this is not 90 degrees. So on this particular one operation, I've installed the drill chuck in the um, spindle. I'm going to take my spindle open by hand and make sure this is in here tight using my drill chuck key. I'm going to clean out my vise, make sure this is clean, and probably don't need to necessarily clamp this, but in this case I'm going to clamp this mill vise closed. And I'm going to make sure my part's completely deburred as best I can, that it will, I'm going to use this part of my vise here and hold it by hand. I'm going to bring my, the spindle over the center of that. And I'm really close, I can't get, I can barely get my part under. So I'm going to give myself a little more clearance. I'm going to bring the table down. And I'm going to make sure I'm in low gear. I'm in low gear here. And I'm going to, I know I'm going to be using this lever. So I'm going to adjust my lever to where I have good mechanical advantage. Because I'm in low gear, I'm going to make sure I use the reverse where it says reverse and now my spindle will be rotated clockwise for a right handed tool. I'm going to use a very slow RPM. I can actually get even 200 or below. Uh, a six flute countersink is going to be a little bit aggressive, but it won't move the part around as much as the single counter flutes do. So I'm just going to be real careful with this when I do it. And I'm actually going to start with, I'll start with the smaller holes. I have good leverage there. And I'm going to bring this over the, the small hole and just gently pack with a little bit of pressure. And I can actually at this point bring in my caliper. And I know that this is a quarter inch hole. The call out for the diameter is 260 thousandths, 
to 280,000. So I'm gonna, I can set my, I can set my um, caliper for 270, and I can actually lock this. And I'm gonna use my two um, inside teeth. I can use the outside teeth as well, but I'm gonna use these and see. visually look at it and even though it's like 260 it's a little small I think it looks good enough so I'm just going to go with that and I'm going to continue on just very gently that looks pretty good And the one thing, if we're in this, during this time of social distancing, I would always suggest to have you ask a fellow student to look at your work. But I, in this case, in these current times, if you have a question, ask me. And I really will give more feedback and really be uh, more, more involved instead of my, I don't want you to feel like I'm really looking over your shoulder because you do need to, um, um, just get comfortable with, with the machine and experience, get that experience on your own. Um, but if you have a question about the feature, about the process, you know, I'll be watching you and giving you feedback. And certainly ask me um, about the accuracy of your procedure and if you've done it correctly. Um, I would expect to give you quite a bit more feedback this semester as opposed to relying more on your fellow students that we often do in this class.